Next, that if a person, if a person kills anybody intentionally, innocent person, it says in the Quran, it says, though they killed everybody, all the ones that are killed. But if he saves somebody, it's as though he saved the whole world. That doesn't sound like giving you permission to go out and kill anybody, does it? Additionally, it teaches us that if anybody takes their own life, they'll never get out of hell. Anybody commits suicide, intentionally take their own life, they're never going to get out of hell. Immediately, some years ago I was in a, working in a prison down in Texas, Bastrop, federal unit. Immediately after a suicide bomber in some country, and I'll leave it at that, I was in the unit and I gave him their Friday sermon. One of the rules in Islam is in the Friday sermon, nobody can speak. You cannot move, can't fidget, you can't play with your beard. Well, ladies usually don't play with their beards anyway, but I'm talking about you can't fool around. You have to sit real still, right? So I took advantage of these poor guys, right? <laughs> and I started preaching a hard message against this business of people who think suicide bombing is something, uh, you know, good or to be proud of or anything like that. Afterwards, one of them got up. He, he wanted to fight. He was so upset. But he had respect for my age, you know. And in Islam, that's another thing. You've got to be respect. But he was, he was red-faced. And he was like, you said, you said. I said, I quoted the source, which is the Quran. He dropped his eyes. He said, yes, but. I said, there's no yes, but to it. Now, the, here's where we come into a problem. So you can understand it. Again, it's with language. People are saying suicide bomber. Suicide, already out. I already told you that. There's no such thing as suicide in Islam. If you do it, you're finished. He's a non-believer. And killing innocents also doesn't work. Even when we're at war, Muslims cannot kill the innocents. They can't. They do? Same problem. I just told you. They go to hell forever. So if you're in a battle, and people are fighting, you're fighting, there are elders, women, children, all the rest of it, you can't do that. In Vietnam, I don't know if we get any vets here, in Vietnam we saw some horrible things from the Orient. So, and I don't want to mention which country, but from some Orient country. They're not Muslim, Buddhist. These guys had bayonets on the end of their rifles, and they were throwing babies up in the air and catching these children like this. If a Muslim ever even accepts that, forget about doing it, just accept it, he's in big trouble with the law. That doesn't work. So, I want to make that point clear. Now, on the other hand, maybe they're not suicide bombers. In this case, maybe it is okay. I'm not trying to placate the Muslims, but I am saying that that is in Islam too. For instance, you live here in Anderson, okay? If somebody from Muncie comes over here with, a, with big tanks and everything, and they're coming in and driving over your property and shooting at you, then you have a right to defend yourself. Yes or no? You? Yeah. But Islam teaches not more than what they do. Not more than what they do. So if they just came over... Even though they got big tanks, but all they came to do was just like trash your flower bed, then you can't kill them. But you can go trash their flower bed. So it has to be equal. There's a whole entire surah in the Quran talking about what I call in Texas English, payback. You can never do more than what they did to you, but it's always better to forgive. And that's the same thing it teaches you in Christianity. Exactly. It's better to forgive. And that's exactly what it says. Now, you might say, well, I saw some Muslims do X or Y or Z. Now, that's a big duh. That's a huge duh. Why? Because, couldn't you look and say, I saw Christians do X or Y and Z too? That means what? They're people. They're humans. People make mistakes, but you don't blame Christianity for what some people do. Is that true? If we're going to insist that a religion has to apologize for the ones who adhere to it, then we need the Pope to give us an apology for what Timothy McVeigh did in Oklahoma. I understood he was Catholic. So I didn't see the Pope make any kind of moves of genuflex to us, did you? They could care less. That's not their business. He's an idiot. 
The church would tell you that in immediate. Just get away from us. We don't want to hear it. And so the same would be with Islam. If you find people do things that are not a part of Islam. Now, again, they will go back and they'll look at the Quran and they'll say, Oh, here's something. Maybe we just take part of this verse here and part of this one over here. And there's where those guys got all that from. Those guys, whoever those guys are, that did the things that we all know very well, didn't need to go to the Quran to get any of it. They didn't need to. Because they didn't start out with the Quran. And they can never justify it to the Muslims. They don't need to. They're just doing what they want to do. If somebody else, again, let's go back now and make the comparison to the people who talk about evolution. You've got people out there who profit when there's wars. You have people who gain when there's hostility in the world and they don't make anything if everybody's at peace. Because if there was all peace all over the world today, and I, and I pray that there would be, I would love this. That would make me very happy. I'd be a very happy camper. But if that were the case, what would be on the front page of Washington Post tomorrow? Nothing. What would be on Times, New York Times? What would be there? Nothing. The Cleveland Plain Dealer, what would they have? Nothing. Houston Post, nothing. Why? Boring. Who will watch the news? Well, today in Muncie, Indiana, uh, two Boy Scouts helped a nice little old lady across the street. We go there now live. We're on scene with Nancy. What do you got there? Well, we've got these two little boys and this uh, old lady here, and uh, we've been holding them here for 15 minutes so that you would come and talk to Boring. Mm -hmm. And you can't sell chewing gum and toothpaste and Tide without some kind of hype. And if you think about it, every time something happens, especially in the last 10 years, we've seen these media companies jump on it and milk it and milk it. If it was a cow, it would die from all this milking. And this uh, September 11th, by the way, I live by the Pentagon. Okay? Well, let me give you a little bit of personal investment in this story. I live close enough to the Pentagon that I was on top of my building photographing this thing. It was scary. Very scary. Because we watched on TV like anybody else. We saw these planes hitting these buildings. And then they said, hit the Pentagon. I went, huh? And I went up there. And while we were up there, by the way, one of the generals from the Pentagon lives in our building. He's standing right next to me. And I said, aren't you lucky you didn't go to work today? He gave me a dirty look and he walked away. Whatever that means. But we were up there and we're looking at this burning and another plane flew over. But it was, uh, we didn't know it was our plane. It was the U.S. Air Force. And he broke the sound barrier when he went over our, our building. And that explosion, we all just fell down on top of the roof. I mean, it's scary. Another invested interest is this. Currently, there are approximately 2,800 names of people that are dead or missing and what took place. Over 500 of them are Muslim. How many of you knew that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sharp folks here. It's a true story. They wanted to, they milked every aspect of this thing though. They had a three month celebration, remember that? And then they had the six month anniversary of it. And then they came out when they took down that last panel of the building and then they wrapped it all up in a shroud and put a flag over it and carried it out on the truck and everybody saluted that at nine months. And then they had the thing a year and now they're having done something again today of going through and asking all the school children and that school closest to it, how did you feel when it happened? That's a year and something later. Are you supposed to let these kids get past it? But it makes news and people watch it. Doesn't make it less than what it was, though. You know, we know that it's horrible. But at the same time, think why somebody keeps milking the same subject. Why, indeed. I think we have to have more balance. And now I'm going to go to my little bit of political preaching. And then I'm going to close. All of us who are the quote unquote believers, meaning we believe in God from the Jews, from the Christians, and from the Muslims, are, are talked about in the Quran, and Allah calls all of us to certain things. So I'm only going to mention just that, what he said. 
that we really have to realize that He's God. What He says goes. And He only created all of us for one purpose. He said, and He talks about mankind. That way anybody, anybody can fall under this category. And the verse where He said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنْ وَالْإِنْسْ إِلَّا يَعْبَدُونَ said, I only created all you guys just to worship me alone without any partners. So if we start with that, and we're asking God to guide all of us through the right thing, then obviously it's going to work out good. And just avoid some of these biases, prejudices, preconceived notions, you know, greed, and some of the other things. And get past that, we can live with a lot of people a lot easier. And maybe, just maybe, God will forgive us. Who knows? I hope so. So thank you for your attention. And if you want more about this subject, I would invite you to take, we have some CDs, some tapes. Um, where are they? Right behind Muhammad back there. Uh, you're welcome to the tapes and CDs. Take what you like. If you run out, we got a box full under the table. Also, uh, something magical happened to our website on September 11th. It disappeared. And we don't know what happened. And we can't get a hold of the host to find out. So, that's nice. But uh, if it ever gets working again, you're welcome to go there and take the articles and have fun with it. In the meantime, there are other websites out there that you can visit. I'd like to mention one of them because I think it can really help you. It's called, it put it as one word, islamguide.com. Islamguide.com. And then uh, he also has links to other websites that you can check out. But he gives a very nice picture, and it's good English, and it's having pictures and explaining miracles of Quran and relationship between the religions. Very nice website. I think you'll enjoy it. My my website's gone, so but it's on the tapes. Today Islam. Whoever did it to me, to us. They didn't know it. We got a new one coming out. It's called Islam Tomorrow. I'll close on that one. I ask Allah to forgive me for my mistakes. I ask all of you to, uh, to you know, pray for me that I'll do better. My Arabic will get better in my English, too. I am from Texas. so, And I pray to Allah.